Hi, I'm Niall from Gulfstream Boat Sales. Today we're taking a look around our 2007 Flipper 705 HT. This is a beautiful, stylish, practical, hardtop cruising boat. It's ideally suited to our climate here in, in the northwest of Europe. And this one's in lovely condition. It's fitted with a Volvo Penta D3, 190 horsepower stern drive engine. It's got 162 hours on the clock. It's been lightly used. It is in lovely condition all the way around and inside. What we're going to do now is take a, a detailed walk around the boat. We're going to show you all the features inside it. We're going to put it through its paces in the water and just hopefully give you a better idea of whether this boat could be the one for you. The first thing I noticed about this boat is the striking colour scheme. I think it looks really well with the grey hull stripe, which is really unusual. Um, that combined with the grey rub rail, the black inlays in the side windows, and the black and grey pinstriping on the side of the boat, I think it gives it a really rich look. Um, and it stands out from the usual sort of blue and white brigade that you see all over the place. You know, um, anything that's different to blue and white, whenever you're selling and looking at as many boats as I am, is a welcome uh, change for the norm. And I think this, this hull, this grey hull colour looks fantastic. Um, taking a walk down along the port side, generally speaking the boat is in really nice condition. The gel coat is pretty much perfect. A couple of very small marks here and there little minor scuffs like this here. The rub rail has a few little scuffs in it as well, but nothing to, to worry about. There's no impact damage as such. There's no star crazing anywhere around the hull here. All the stainless steel rails, everything in this boat, being a Scandinavian built boat, um, it's all really well done. It's all practical stuff. It's all chunky. Uh, so that, that's, that goes for the cleats, goes for these chunky uh, guard rails up along the side of the boat. Um, all the skin fittings here, the little chrome skin fittings and tank vents and stuff, they're all in really nice condition. The pinstriping, the hull stripes here are excellent. There was a bit of fender marking in the hull which we sort of mopped out of it, just compounded out. Um, and we've got the, the hull back to a nice, nice shine. Above the rub rail is perfect, that white gel is perfect up there. There's no, there's no impact damage, no marks, no anything up there. Um, even right up on the, uh, the hard top roof, that fiberglass roof, it's in excellent condition too. Then coming right the way back here, we've got the 705 HT badge, we've got the flipper logo on there, we've got the flipper graphic back here, which is all really good as well. One thing I want to point out is there was a little scratch or a chip out of the gel here. It's obviously been repaired at some point in the past. It's a pretty good repair, apart from the fact it's the wrong colour. <laughs> They've just used white gel coat in there. Um, we have we do intend to just uh, sand this back out and fill it with a colour match gel so you don't see that, doesn't stand out. We just haven't had time to do it before the video, but we will do that before the boat's sold. Um, with a couple of light scratches on the, the rub rail here at the back, but the gel itself is in really good condition, pretty much all marked. Taking a look then at the starboard side of the boat, again, it's in beautiful condition, still a really nice shine of the gel coat. Looks the part, in excellent condition. Um, up at the nose, you'll notice there's a couple of, again, these are minor scuffs. I don't know if you can come in closer and see those, but very minor scuffs here and here, and some light scuffs in the gel as well. Most of them, there was a bit more than this. We, we polished it and sanded it and mopped it, and it, most of them come out, but just a few, very minor. You're going to get that on a boat, really, of any age. Um, but I, I'm obviously just pointing everything out here so that if you're going to travel to see the boat, um, you know exactly what you're coming to. My objective here, with, as it is with all the boats I sell, is that you're not going to be disappointed whenever you arrive. And most people who come here actually say the boat looks better than they were expecting, so I just want to, you know, pre I prefer that than having somebody come thinking it's like brand new, it's not a new boat. Um, so just so you know exactly what you're coming to see. Um, coming on back here, the gel's in lovely condition. Very, very minor things. If you're looking really close, you will spot a couple of little minor like this one here, about an inch and a half long. I don't know if the camera will even pick it up. Um, coming on back then, don't think there's, there's nothing else really to point out. A couple of little scuffs in the rub rail, but the gel looks the part. All the pinstriping's perfect, the graphics are perfect, the flipper graphics, the biases on this side are excellent, and then above the rub rail, everything is pristine. There's no there's, there's no damage anywhere around the boat that rocks above that rub rail. The stainless steel bars on this side are great. Again, the big chunky stainless steel cleats, they're all in really good condition. The actual hard top roof itself, the, the glass, the windscreen, 
and the seals and everything all look really good. Um, and coming right the way down to this corner on this uh, starboard side, again the gel is completely all marked here and a couple of minor scuffs on the rod rail which is designed to take that sort of abuse. If it really bothered you, you can replace the rail. It's simply a matter of undoing these screws here and you can just pop it off and pop a new one on. Usually the, the price is around about 300, 400 quid tops. Um, and you can freshen up, the, a new rub rail would make this boat look virtually like brand new again. But um, apart from a few little scuffs on the rub rail, it's in excellent condition. Flipper boats are owned by the same company that has Bella and Aquador. Um, and they're Finnish companies, so they're built in Finland, they're Scandinavian designed. Um, they're super high quality. This boat is actually built on the same hull as an Aquador 23 hardtop, so it's basically the same boat as an Aquador. Um, the flipper just has a slightly lower level of fit and finish, so things like the rub rails plastic as opposed to stainless steel insert, um, and a few little bits and pieces in through the boat, but whenever you compare it to an Aquador 23, they make an excellent value buy. I mean, it's the same boat, same hull, same engine, coming, in, coming out of the same factory, um, and uh, it's a top quality boat, really is perfectly suited to the sort of conditions you'll find around the UK and Ireland um, and uh, they're, they're well thought out, they're very practical and usable boats. So taking a look at the transom here, you can see we've got a fold-in three-step stainless steel boarding ladder, it stores in underneath this little recessed locker, so whenever you have the ladder up you've got a clear, clear deck space there. This integrated swim platform is probably about maybe 18 inches, um, 20 inches deep it's the full width of the boat. Um, we've got integrated fender storage up here, enough for four fenders. We've got a little teak inlaid step so you can get easy access in and out of the back of the boat from the swim platform. We have a little storage locker over here on the port side. All these stainless steel clips and catches are all in perfect working order, as are like the hinges and the handles and everything. So this is a little drained uh, storage bin, so use it for a uh, live well or bait well or ice box or whatever. You can funnel up the opening. We've got a little stainless steel vent there over the outlet. Um, it's all stainless steel hardware throughout, goes without saying. Again, big chunky plates back here. There's nice engine room vents on the stern corners as well. These are perfect condition. Um, they look, you know, they blend in well with the lines on the boat. Um, and it's a, just a very practical uh, stern, so if you're swimming off the boat, it's easy to get in and out of the water. One minor issue I have to point out here is a, another previous gel repair, so the owner was telling me, I think this happened fairly early on in his ownership of the boat, he was still getting the grips of the handling, and this part just went underneath the jetty or something, and it took a chip out of the gel coat. Now, I think it was the original dealer did this repair, it wasn't a brilliant repair to be fair, but it's, uh, it's purely cosmetic, it's just, a, it's white as opposed to off cream, which could be a better color match, but that's the only defect that I think we're gonna find on the way through the rest of the boat. It, um, minor issue, but just so you know about it. So taking a look below the waterline. First of all, this is a this is a fresh water boat. It's a one owner from New Boat. It was bought from uh, the flipper dealer in Dublin in 2007. Um, it's only ever had one owner and it's only ever been used in fresh water on the Shannon system here in Ireland. So it has all the hallmarks of a fresh water boat. There's no corrosion anywhere around it. Um, and that's apparent from looking at the, the stern drive as well. It looks in great condition. The boat's fitted with a Volvo Penta D3, 190 horsepower uh, stern drive, and it's matched up to this dual prop drive. So we've got twin stainless steel propellers. They're counter rotating on a single shaft, so you get really good um, uh, power transmission to the water. So it gets the boat up on the plane quickly, keeps it on the boat plane down to lower speeds. And it also means you get good tracking stability, stability whenever you're just tootling along at slow speeds. So that means you don't have to saw away at the steering wheel so much to get it going straight line. Um, stainless steel props, they're in perfect condition. The, uh, we, I've had the boat running in the water, it's silky smooth, the gear shift's lovely. There's no vibration at all through the boat. Um, the blades of the prop are, are pristine. And, and like the rest of the drive, it's in lovely condition. The original paint finish, a little bit of growth on it here. Just needs a bit more elbow grease to get it cleaned up. This is purely just a little bit of a marine growth, but um, there's no corrosion here. The paint has, has come away a wee bit from this part, but this is a plastic cover. It's not the, it's not aluminium, so that's no problem. It's nothing to worry about. All the trim ram seals are all bone dry, so there's no tracks on my fingers there. So that's good. 
and the bellows as well they look pretty good they're nice and soft and pliable um, and they're in good condition there is some service issue with the boat um, the owner sent that up to me so there's service invoices to to show when she was last serviced and maintained and stuff like that but she has been well looked after by that the current owner um, we've also got two huge trim tabs on the port and starboard side they're matched up with some uh, trim tab indicators up on the dash so you can tell what position they're in um, and it's purely for correcting the boat if you're running across wind the boat will tend to lean into the wind so you can use the tabs to get yourself straight again and if you're tootling along at super slow speeds if you drop those two tabs down in conjunction with this uh, twin counter rotating prop setup it means that the boat really does track exceptionally well you'll notice from looking at the transom it's got a pretty decent uh, V so it's a fairly deep V hull so although this one's spent its life in fresh water it is a cracking little coastal cruiser as well it's category C rated um, on the RCD C certificate um, so she is rated for coastal use and it performs really well uh, at sea too the boat has been uh, previously anti-foil. The condition, the underlying condition of the anti-foil paint is, is really good. It's not flaking off or anything, it's been well done. Um, but it is due for a new coat of paint before it goes in the water. This is a primer coat that we've put on it. We just decided to leave the primer on because I think it looks quite well with the grey hull band. Um, but you will need to, plus we weren't sure exactly what that paint was. So whenever you're not sure what the underlying paint is, you need to put on the, a, a primer as a tie coat so the new paint doesn't fight with the old stuff um, so if you are buying the boat putting it in the water it's going to need that priming just finish off priming it and then paint it with a fresh coat of antifoil and paint um, but the, uh, the condition of the hull is perfect um, there's no chips or gouges or scratches out of it and the boat spent most of its life in the water and lifted out for annual maintenance and things like that but it means that you don't have any trailer damage or chips or scuffs or scrapes I should point out that this is our own yard trailer here it's not for sale with the boat the boat is trailerable it's only about two ton in weight or slightly under and it's uh, just under eight feet six inches wide so it's perfectly uh, sized for towing on the road um, but the the trailer is not included in the sale we had a small issue with the camera last night so we're back here now on day two to take a look through the uh, the interior of the boat so as I said we've got this little teak uh, laid step that gives you access and over the transom and into the cockpit. The first thing that sort of strikes you is the, the plush feel of this cockpit. Beautiful tan um, leather upholstery with nice grey pinstripe and it picks up the, the colour on the outside of the boat. Um, we've got a lovely big U-shaped lounger here. We've got the flipper table on a rotating columns mount. Um, we've got the forward helm seat, passenger seat and this great hardtop which uh, you've loads of headroom underneath. There's also a full set of camper covers for the back end of this boat. So we've got a flat bimini section that it zips onto the front of the, or the back end of the, the hardtop. It's a flat roof, comes right to the stern. And then we've got a vertical curtain at the transom with an opening section to get in and out through the centre. And we've got two side curtains as well. We will put the covers on the boat and, and take some pictures. We just have them off, give them a, a bit of a clean and a spruce up. Whenever you, you're not using the covers, they fold down flat and they go into this recess behind the seat. So whenever the, uh, they're in there, this cover goes over. But there's a big recess where the, the, the frame folds into. And then with this, uh, this leather cover over the back, it gives a lovely smooth finish to the deck. So you'll, you'll see as we go through the boat, there's lots of little neat design touches like that that just contribute to a feeling of quality in the boat and also you know, stylish finish. So um, it looks fabulous. We'll, we'll jump in now and have a close look through. Whenever you are stepping in here, it's easy just to fold this, this uh, cover splits in the, in the centre so it's easy to move. And you can step onto the fibreglass so you don't have to walk over the, the central seat cushion there. And then once you're in, it's just a matter of folding that back on there. So the boat is it's 23 feet long and it's just under 8 foot 6 inches wide. So this rear uh, lounger seat layout here makes the full use of the width, the full width of the boat. Um, and it's easily big enough to accommodate probably six adults. I think the, boat's, the boat is C rated to carry six um, category C, so it's coastal use up to six passengers. There's loads of seating in here for that number of people. This table is a lovely teak wood effect with a flipper logo on there. Like you can fold it around and all sorts of different options. Um, because that, the, the mount is offset to the side, 
whenever you're not using it, it's easy just to fold it in out of the way. Um, you don't have to remove it. You don't have to pull out the, the support or anything. Um, but you can do that if you want to open up the uh, all the seating space there. Um, we've got lovely teak uh, teak flooring throughout with the white caulk lines in it. Complements the the wood panel finishes around the hard top roof here, and it's all stainless steel hardware. So we've got stainless steel rails around the back end of the cockpit. Big stainless steel handrails here on the uh, the back end of the the hard top roof as well. And everything as you would expect on a Scandinavian built boat that's also coming out of the, the Aquador factory. Everything's really solid. The roof itself super solid. All the all the hardware and the upholstery is lovely. Um, and condition one, this one is near immaculate. It's really, really um, in great shape. So this is a very comfortable seating area. The cushions are deeply upholstered. We've got great upholstered backrests all the way around here, and you're sitting low inside the boat. So with with the covers up or down, you don't lose any headroom. And if you get the covers up, you can still have the full use of this area. Um, you've got great protection from the hard top roof. Um, you know, whenever the boat's underway at speed. Your passengers can sit back here. They can still have a conversation with the helmsman, people further forward in the uh, in the boat. Um, and you're not getting buffeted by the wind or anything. It's a it's a lovely place to spend time. There uh, there are filler cushions, so you can put filler cushions in this center area here. Um, we'll do that shortly to show you. But you can make this into either a big sun pad or it can double up as a as a berth, an overnight berth with the covers on. Um, you a couple of adults or a few kids could easily sleep out here and in combination with the the twin berth cabin at the front the boat will accommodate four people for overnight stays. We've got an excellent helm position on the boat. Um, first of all there's fantastic visibility all the way around. The, the screens are well set, they're at a good angle, there's no big uh, A pillars or anything to impede your vision. You've got a great clear vision out both sides and over the front of the, the boat. There's very little bow rise with this boat whenever it's getting on the plane. It just rises ever so slightly and, and drops down pretty quickly so you never lose sight of the horizon. Um, and you, you've also got, because these seats, the helm seat here is elevated, you're looking over the tops of your, your the heads of your passengers at the, at the back. So great all round visibility. The hard top gives phenomenal protection from the elements. You know, whether it's rain and whatever, you're out in heavy seas, you're going to stay nice and warm and dry in this cabin. Um, the, the seat set at, at a nice height. It does have a flip up bolster so you can fold this, this back just to give you a bit more um, height to, for looking out through the screen. And with this sliding uh, hatch in the roof, we've got twin sliding hatches here so um, you can slide this roof the whole way back. And because of the, the, the position of the footrest here, uh, you can stand up, you get clear visibility all the way around the boat if you're, if you're standing up. So that's good if you are bringing the boat alongside, say you've got crew members on the uh, on the foredeck or standing on the jetty. If you stand with your head up, you can communicate with them. Um, just makes the whole experience of handling the boat around the marina much easier. It also means that on a very good day, you can have the roofs back, you get a really good uh, flow of air through the through the cockpit and uh, keep, uh, keep the boat cool. So the very good helm seat, bucket style helm seat, has that flip up holster, it's fully adjustable for four and a half so you can get a comfortable steering position. Got this flipper steering wheel, flipper centre, this sort of leather effect with these silver inlays. Um, we've got the Volvo uh, throttle and shift lever here, conveniently located at, the, at your right hand side. This is a, a EVC control boat so it's all electronic vessel control, so this is digital throttle and shift. Um, so the controls are silky smooth. The boat's only run for 162 hours, so everything's in immaculate condition. It feels brand new. Uh, all the gauges and instruments are all working perfectly, as is all the uh, the equipment. Um, so to run you through what we've got here, first of all, whenever you power up, brings on the the Volvo controls. So the main instrument is your your Volvo Taco here. So whenever you key on, you can see here it's saying no faults. So this boat, because it's got that EVC system. It logs any faults through the through the instrument. We've got this warning gauge, so if you've got any problems, it'll bring up a, a warning light on the the warning gauge, and depending on what the what the problem is, it'll tell you. It'll dictate what the what the light should be. So whenever you power up, it just runs those around and just to check they're all working properly. It tells us there's no faults, um, and then we can with the EVC panel down here at my left hand. 
we can uh, cycle through the the menus on the on the gauge. So I just want to quickly show you. So we've got things about like engine hours, 162.1 hours on the engine. We've got things like fuel flow rate as well. We've got uh, settings gauges, trip data tells you your average fuel flow rate. So you can see the average the average fuel usage on this boat has been 10 liters an hour, which is very good. Uh, trip fuel 69 liters. Um, you obviously can reset this for each journey and things. So it's a very good system. Um, it gives you lots of info on the engine. As well as that digital system, we've got a couple of analog gauges here, which just repeat that information in easy to read instruments on the dash. So we've got a voltmeter, we've got engine oil, or sorry, engine temperature gauge, we've got a fuel gauge, and we've got a trim gauge as well, so you can tell what angle to trim the legs at. This boat's also fitted with an auto helm by data system, which gives you the depth of water under the keel, and gives you the speed of the, wa speed of the boat through the water. Um, in terms of how this boat performs, that D3 190 is a beautiful engine. It starts first turn of the key, very smooth running motor, um, and it gives this boat fairly effortless performance. The boat gets on the plane quickly with a minimal of fuss. A comfortable cruising speed for the boat is around about 20 knots, and at that speed the engine's doing around about 2800 RPM, 2700 RPM, there, thereabouts, so it's um, nice comfortable speed for the engine. You're well below maximum RPM. It's a, an efficient cruising speed and it'll run all day long. At 20 knots you're making good progress as well. If you open it up, um, whenever you get up to the maximum RPM, the boat will... I did see 30 knots out of it on the sea trial. We'll show you the footage of that shortly. Um, but yeah, you can get it up to 30 knots. You can trim it up, lift it out of the water a wee bit, and she moves along at a great pace. 30 knots is more than enough for the vast majority of people in a boat like this. So if you are using it as a coastal cruising boat and you want to get home in a hurry, or the weather turns against you, the seas are getting a bit a bit bigger. Um, with that power on tap, you can get home um, home quickly and back into the harbour. So it um, it runs really well. Boat performs excellently, and because she's diesel, she's very efficient to run. Ten liters an hour usage that we saw on the the recent trip there is extremely good for a, for a boat of this size, um, and. Uh, definitely the most desirable sort of engine to have in a boat like this is that diesel. It's easy to get, you can get it at most marinas, safe, reliable um, and all the rest of it. So um, we will show you the water test footage now after we finish up here so you can see for yourself exactly how the boat performs underway. In terms of the other bits and pieces of equipment first, um, we've got uh, windscreen wipers on both the port and starboard screens. Everything's perfect work on order here by the way. Horn switch, we've got, these are the indicators for the trim tab, so the trim tab switches are up here, and we've got these Bennett uh, trim tab indicators, so again Bennett's probably the best name there is in trim tabs, very high quality system, the indicators are working really well and it means you can get, keep a close eye on, on what the tabs are doing. This is the EVC panel as I showed you for controlling the, uh, the gauge uh, on the Volvo system, we've got 12 volt power outlet, perfect for charging phones and things here. Got a navigation light switches, trim tab switches, panel light switch. We've got a switch for our uh, fresh water pump and also for the bilge pump. The, the bilge pump is automatic, so there's a float switch on it. But if you want to override that, you can operate the, the, the pump from the switch on the dash here. And then we've got our uh, screen demister sort of stroke heater. So this is a twin speed unit, high or low setting on it. Um, it's located underneath the, the footwell in the passenger seat and it blows out warm air from these two vents up at the forward part of the screen. So that means if you're using the boat in the winter or in colder weather, it keeps the screens clear, it runs off the, it takes its heat from the engine. So whenever the engine's warm, it's just a little matrix heater like the, the heater in your car and it blows hot air out into the, uh, into the cabin. So with the covers up and the, the, the heater running, it does give great heat inside the cabin so again it makes this like a proper all-weather all-season boat and it also keeps your screens clear so you get good visibility and stuff um, and that's all in perfect working order there's little um, these are little fuses sort of circuit breakers below each switch so if anything trips you can easily reset the circuit without having to go hunting for a fuse box um, and the condition of everything here is perfect like I said it's all working immaculately well the, the actual dash panels themselves are a nice grey colour, again colour coated with the exterior of the boat. Up above the dash we've got a 
blocked area for a chart table here, so you keep your paper charts up here. There's another little storage area on the passenger side, slightly deeper. So if you want to keep maybe like a handheld VHF in there or handheld compass, you can do that. We've got a built-in compass right at the very front of the dash. We have a North Star GPS unit mounted overhead, so it's in clear view for the drivers. An Explorer 550, so it's a five-inch GPS chart plotter. Um, and then down below the the dash, we've got a status indicator light for the fire extinguisher system and the uh, and the engine bay. So it's an auto extinguishing system. We've got a green light here, which shows it's in good working order. And then we've got our stereo CD player down here too. So it's also working perfectly. All the speakers are working. Um, and then there's one little small cup holder. I have to say, I'm used to testing a lot of American boats. These Scandinavian cup holders are extremely small. So I don't know what they're supposed to be putting in there, maybe a 250 ml can or something or, or whatever, but um, they don't excel in the cup holder department, but because they do everything else so well, I think we'll probably excuse them that, but um, there is one cup holder in the boat. Um, so yeah, this is a fantastic helm position. Everything's in great condition. Being a Scandinavian boat, there's lots of little nooks and crannies, lots of inventive use of space and lots of stuff crammed into this boat that isn't immediately apparent whenever you have a quick look at it. So we'll start to go through all this stuff now and show you exactly what we've got. So on the passenger seat here, again we've got double bolster on it. Um, the, the footrest is at the same height as the helm seat so the passenger can stand and look through the roof as well. Integrated wooden handrail here 
as I said, a wee storage compartment there. We've got a storage bin in here where the owner has just perfectly sized for its kettle. And where you can boil that kettle is on this cooker, which is located underneath the passenger seat. So the passenger seat folds forward. We've got a built in heat shield on the underneath side of the seat. And we've got a Wallace um, diesel cooker. So we've got the control strip over here, just turn it around, very easy to work. This is the temperature control button there, turns it on, it goes through a little uh, startup cycle. So it's a little gas burner in there, runs off the diesel in the, in the fuel tank, and we've got a twin plate uh, hob here. So you can boil the kettle, you can prepare a bit of food. If you're going away for a weekend on the boat, um, you've got that, you've got also got your hot and cold running water here. Um, and you've got that the pump the switch for the pump on the dash so you've got a really compact and a f neat little galley here below that we've got our 12 volt refrigerator see the little power light on there it's working as well I'm just going to turn off this this cooker whenever you turn that off the uh, the little blower still runs for a while it, it, it's on a shutdown cycle so it takes a wee while to shut down um, but everything here is working perfectly. Decent sized fridge, again, more than enough space for a couple going away for a weekend on the boat. This, uh, the helm seat also folds forward. And that just gives you a bit of sort of counter space. A bit of worktop, so if you're preparing food and things, you can do that. Another cupboard in here. You can suppress, you probably want to keep like glasses and cutlery and things like that in there out of the way. And we've got four drawers underneath. So all good sized drawers, everything's running really smoothly uh, and working well. And um, just underneath the, so I'm gonna, that's switched off. You put this down, even if that's warm, you can still put this down because you've got the heat shield there. And then you just, before you head off anywhere or go you know, out to sea, you wanna just clip those seats back down so they don't, uh, they don't move around whenever you're underway. Um, and in underneath the, the helmsman, the helmsman's feet, you can see we've got access into the, the fresh water tank. So that's where you can fill the tank from in there. There's also a bit of storage down in there as well. While we're at it, I'll show you what's underneath the passenger side footwell. So under here, we've got service access into the, the heater unit. So it's the heater demister, screen demister unit. So you can see. All the nooks and crannies in the boat are nice and clean and dry, there's no water pulling anywhere, everything looks to be really neat and tidy. Something else I've just figured out actually is you can undo this velcro panel, this folds flat so you can get this right up, get, get it up square so completely clears the worktop, this opens easily and all the rest of it. And the, the, the health passage like one does the same, so just means you can get the, the seat folded further forward. So that's pretty good, I always learn something new whenever I'm doing these videos. There's absolutely tons of storage all the way around the uh, this rear seating area in the cockpit. So the cushions just lift out and then we've got these um, panels, lift out panels. So that's a massive locker. You can see the owner's got all his fenders and dock lines down in there. It's just a big empty locker so that'll swallow up stacks of gear. Um, in this back corner then, another compartment we can access fairly easily. Um, again, it's just plain storage. There's a couple of valves in there for probably isolating fuel, I would imagine. Um, the, the floors are like a textured rubberized finish, so whenever you put things down in there, they shouldn't roll around too much. Then, in on the, uh, the other side, just fold the table out of the way. Again, the seats just come out easily. Another big storage compartment. We've got a boat hook down in there, and you can also access the battery isolator switches. So, twin battery set up in this boat, two switches there, plus a row of circuit breakers. They're easy to access. Um, and again, you've tons of storage space in there. All the pipes, you notice all the pipes, everything's neatly clipped. This is a sign of the high quality build. Everything's neatly clipped, it's all grouped together, you know. P-clip, P-clips on those bottom hoses, you know, at sort of 12 inch intervals. Um, just keeps everything where it should be. Uh, and then down in this back corner is where the batteries are located. 
So we've got twin battery set up again, everything's really neat and tidy. You've also got the, the reservoir for the trim tabs and the trim motor down in there too. Engine access on the boat is really easy and straightforward as well. All you have to do is take off this folding uh, cushion, which is really easy to remove. And then it, this inspection hatch opens up um, and gives you really good access. Well, the access isn't amazing, but it's pretty good for uh, all your daily maintenance checks on the Volvo Pent, the D3 190 engine. Now, this is a freshwater boat from new. It's only ever had one owner. It's never been in salt water. And whenever you look in this engine bay, you can tell that that engine looks virtually like brand new there's not a single spot of corrosion anywhere around it the mounts are perfect the mounting plates are perfect we've got a big uh, water separating filter for the fuel system there it's in excellent condition all the, the it's all you know this way it's all double clipped here all the hoses are, are double all the boat systems they've double clamped all the hoses everything's properly mounted it's screwed on to like really good quality plates we've got good quality sound insulation all the way around the panel here there's a nice heavy lid great quality catches just the, the Scandinavian build quality of this boat comes through in spades you know um, this easy access or you can easily check the coat level we've got a dry fluid level or power steering fluid level over here and the dipstick is just down the side there it's easy to get to um, and everything is in really nice condition various things are here is good given a green indication and the build is nice and clean um, and everything looks looks top notch. If you need better access for your sort of maintenance, changing filters and stuff like that, what you can do is pull this cushion out. You see these two big screws on either side. This panel here, just four screws, and the whole thing can lift away, and then you get much better access right to the back back of the engine. Um, so it's um, you know everything's been well thought through, and that motor is in beautiful condition. We have a separate forward cabin here. At the front of the boat, we get into it through this lockable sliding perspex door, nice big stainless steel handle on it. The teak floor then continues into the cabin. And then we've got um, we've got nice sort of uh, velour, beige velour uh, upholstery in here. Again, it's got the, the grey piping on it, so it's colour coded with the cabin of the boat, the cockpit, sorry. And, uh, and the exterior. Now these three cushions here are the filler cushions for the the cab, the cockpit, uh, sun lounger, stroke bed. So they can store in here out of the way. And then you'll notice up around the shelf here, the owner's got the three filler cushions that go in here in the center of this V berth. So they go in across here to make this up into a big double bed. You've got great length here. I'd say there must be at least six or seven feet of length on the berth. So plenty big enough to accommodate two adults in comfort and um, the upholstery is in lovely condition the headlining panels are all really nice condition these are little covers over the windscreen motors here we've got an overhead uh, hatch access hatch Bomar hatch we've got three overhead uh, spotlights down in here we've got a little mirror at the head of the bed this is all uh, upholstered backrests around here there's stories in the shelf behind that um, so whether you're sitting in here during the day, you know, kids are coming down and out of the way, um, it's a comfortable place to spend some time. And then at night time, you've got, you know, the overhead reading lights, big berth, um, and there's plenty of storage in here too. Um, so underneath the, all the seat cushions, again, we've got more storage panels. Everything's molded fiberglass down in there, lined lockers. Um, we've also got our Porta potty in here too. So a Thetford portable toilet. It stores underneath this little thing, and because you've got that smoked glass on the the entry door in here, you do get a bit of pr decent privacy if you need to use the toilet. Um, so everything's in really lovely condition. Again, I don't think it's seen too much use. Another big locker up on the uh, the for forward section. Um, and uh, a wee bit of storage in a cupboard here on the port side. A couple of little hooks in there for hanging gear up. And then we've got our, this is the original owner's pack with all the manuals, their service invoices in here, um, all the original handbooks and stuff for the, in, the, in this original pack. So as I said, it's a one owner boat, all the paperwork's uh, perfect. It only takes literally a minute to convert this seating area 
into the sun pad. So you just the, the table just lifts up out of the support, and and these these panels, these filler cushions, they're they're solid backed. They literally just set in on these little uh, the wooden rails there. So you make that up into either a huge double bed or a big sun pad. Um, in this part of the world, it's probably mainly going to be used as extra sleeping space. So if you're going away for the weekend, either two couples or say a family of five or something, the kids could sleep out here. You've got a separate cabin at the front for, for the adults and the owner. And um, you've got everything you need for a weekend on the water. To make your way forward up to the foredeck of the boat, there is side deck access up the port and starboard sides. Um, it's not the widest side deck in the world, but it is wide enough to walk up. We've got molded, it's non-skid, obviously, uh, deck in there. We've got a big chunky handrail, runs the full length of the, the uh, hard top roof. So you hold on to something whenever you're climbing up here. And then once you're up onto the foredeck itself, we've got uh, a decent bit of space up here. Again, it's all molded, non-skid. We've got access into the anchor locker. See the owner's got a um, bunch of ropes, dock lines and things. That's a you can tell it's an inland boat that wouldn't be the, the best sea anchor in the world, but um, a good grappling anchor there with a bit of chain on there. Um, and you've got this open and bow rail as well. So again, this is another Scandinavian design feature, so you can hop on and off the front of the boat um, if you need to. You can take a quick look at the, the roof of the hardtop while we're up here. See, so you've got the little, um, little stainless steel arch on the top with the navigation light there. You've got a GPS antenna at the front, and you can see the runners uh, for those sliding hardtop. Uh, roof, the hatches, and everything's in perfect condition. So there you have it, that's our 2007 Flipper 705 HT. The boat's fitted with a Volvo Penta D3 190 horsepower diesel stern drive. Um, it's got a beautiful spec, including the onboard heater demister, the North Star sat nav, we've got the Wallace uh, diesel cooker, we've got the fridge, fresh water system. There's, there's all that you need on board for a a small family or two couples to go away for a long weekend on the water. The hardtop offers excellent protection and being a flipper, Scandinavian built, super practical, really high quality of build and, and this one's a one owner boat from you, it's only ever been in fresh water. Hopefully you'll agree that it, it's in fantastic shape. I think it's going to make a great buy for someone. I really like the boat, I think it's ideal for the climate that we have here and if you're looking for a, a bit of an all, all weather boat and something that's an all rounder um, you could do a lot worse than this this flipper 705 if you want to come and have a look at the boat or if you've got any questions about it or you want to arrange to a sea trial or a survey please don't hesitate to get in touch um, the best thing is to uh, give me a call or drop me an email at sales at gulfstreamshop.com or if you fill out the callback request form on this page of the website I'll contact you at a time that's convenient. Thank you very much for watching.